Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, often like the waves in the ocean, we can be tossed to and fro. Sometimes it's hard to steady ourselves. And so, in this space of worship, help us to center ourselves, to stand still, to linger in the moment, to be open to the pouring of the Holy Spirit into us. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your eyesight, O Lord. Amen. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, give me a clean heart. Give us a clean heart. A senior couple comes to therapy. One day, the wife, while she's cleaning her house, discovers a bag of tapes in the closet. This bag is way in the back. She's never seen it before, but today she sees it and she pulls it out. She finds an old VCR. She sets up the VCR and plays them. And on the tape are countless scenes of her and her husband with various other women. And none of those women are her. A wave of pain hits her. To say that her husband and her have grown apart is an understatement. They don't even like each other anymore, not much. The kids are all grown up. They have both retired. The husband is having some real serious health challenges. But the silence the silence that grows between them feels almost unbearable at times. She knows they need help, and so she finds a counselor and she convinces her husband to go with her to counseling. As the therapist prokes and prods, it comes out that they got married at a relatively early age and that she was pregnant. The husband, though, recalls being in love with his spouse and learning very early on from her that she was not likewise in love with him. He planted that seed in his own backyard. The wife confesses, but I have grown to love you. We have created a family together. Where I am today and where I was yesterday are simply not the same but the husband is not moving. Weeds and all have grown around their home, their hearts. For over 40 years, he has carried this knowledge with him. She did not love me. It has followed him into countless infidelities, into wandering, and now here they are. It's amazing how easily unchecked stuff in our lives can get out of hand. A hurt here, a harm there. How words and events and situations can pile up like a home lived in for years. We collect pain and we collect misunderstanding. We collect ill intent and we collect dust. We bury things in places that later we cannot find, but they are nonetheless in our homes. My cousin is getting a new bed and she needed to make room for it. Imagine that. She realized through the years her daughters had moved and every time they needed to drop some stuff off that they had no place for in their apartments, guess where they put it? They dropped that stuff off with her. So now not only did she have her stuff and her son living with her stuff, but she had their stuff as well. And they had not come back for their stuff and she needed space for this bed. If this bed was gonna fit in her home, she needed to make room for it. She really hadn't thought that much about all the stuff she had accumulated over the years until it was necessary to bring something else into her home. How easily we accumulate not just literal physical stuff, but other stuff, mental, spiritual stuff that clouds our judgment and clouds our hearts. 
Two friends get into a heated argument. They both are very angry and they both are right because anger accelerates that sense that I am right and you are wrong. They end the call with each other, resign that I'm not speaking until the other one apologizes to me. This argument leads to years and years of these two friends not talking to one another. One of the other friends intercedes and says, you all need to cut that mess out and start talking to one another. But they don't listen to the friend, and it turns into over a decade. These two friends run into each other in the library. They hug and embrace, and they are genuinely glad to see one another. One does not even remember what they were arguing about. The other remembers but realizes it was so unimportant. They have lost so many years in each other's lives over something they both agree wasn't worth it. They laugh and talk and they try to catch up. This is where we enter the biblical text today. We are given a little bit of moral advice. We are given some instructions for living our lives as Christians. Professor Sally Brown says that we have here a radical blueprint for an utterly transformed pattern of human relationships that the author calls one new humanity. Do not lie. Do not let anger live in you overnight. Do not let evil rent space in your head. Be careful what you say. Our words should lift one another up. Our words should give grace to one another. Be kind. Be forgiving. In other words, don't hold on to stuff that clutters your life and clutters your heart. Cultivate forgiveness such as Christ has shown to us. Every Sunday, we say in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our wrong ways as we forgive others who have wronged us. Every Sunday, we say those words. An awesome path, the professor reminds us, if we really mean it and we practice it. I have really become saddened in listening to politicians speak about one another. Trump easily calls journalists stupid. He calls other people dumb. He says Kamala has a low IQ. He says Hillary is crooked, and Elizabeth Warren is Pocahontas, and Joe Biden is sleepy. This past week, he said, though I don't normally talk about people, he called this lady fat. I'm wondering, I'm not going to resist that thing I'm accusing others of. <laughs> Walls has called Trump and Vance weird. Now, what is weird? J.D. Vance has called Kamala an unhappy, childless cat lady. The gloves come off and they go after each other. What do any of these proclamations and words have to do with leading our country? When did it become okay to be rude? When did it become okay to be unkind? How can we expect our youth to behave on the high road when the adults have failed them? We really have to pray for our country, but we also have to pray for ourselves. It's easy to slide in that ditch. We have to be in the active business of cleaning our hearts. One day I came home and I opened the door and this offensive smell greeted me. I immediately went to the trash can. Some things you throw away can wait until you get the trash full, but some things need to be taken out immediately. Even though the trash can was not full, the smell dictated that the trash had to go out immediately, and so it is with our lives. It is important daily as we pray and come before our Lord that we allow God to inspect our lives. And if it is not pleasing, if it smells, take it out immediately. 
We didn't just take it out, but we had to spray, we had to burn some candles, because stuff can not only take over our houses, it can take over our hearts. You want to up your game as a Christian? Take the trash out daily. Clean your own house. Clean your heart. We need to empty the trash daily. The work of cleaning our home is not done alone. There's this lady, a cleaning lady, and she's on TikTok, and she records jobs she does in people's homes. She helps people who have mental and physical disabilities whose homes have fallen into really, really bad state. She takes on cases that are really bad, and whereas other people judge them, she does not. She says they have a condition and they cannot help it. At times, the homes are so bad, she puts on this full face gas mask and a hazmat disposable white suit to protect herself while she's cleaning in the home. Yes, homes can get that bad. Some of the homes she cleans takes nine to 10 days, and you see her going in and cleaning and cleaning. She helps them to get their home clean again, reminding us that maintaining a clean heart takes a rightful relationship with God, and it takes community accountability. Some people say, well, what's the purpose in cleaning the home when it gets dirty again? Not my place. I'm just here to help them get a clean home, to experience what a clean home feels like. That's why it's so important for us to have the spiritual discipline of sitting still, sitting before God daily, because keeping a clean heart is something that requires God's intervention. I went to the Veggie Fest yesterday, lots and lots and lots of people. I'm not sure I thought it was going to be that many people. I came home with some leftover food. I'm nowhere near a vegan, but I thought, oh, it might help me to eat a little bit healthier, you know, on this new leg of my own <laughs> healing journey. So I ate some stuff. I tried some stuff, and I bought some stuff home. I got home, and I was tired, and I collapsed in my bed. I ate a little bit of food that night. I ate the thing I liked the most, and I left the other stuff in containers. When I woke up the next morning, I'm telling you, all the food that was left over was gone. There are only two possibilities outside of me and my household, and the prime suspect was Prince, our dog. If I didn't know that I had that food, I would never have known I had it. That's how well Prince cleaned me out. Do you guys hear me? Not a crumb left. Nothing was left in the containers. When he was younger and we would go on walks, we really had to watch him. He would put all kinds of things in his mouth. During the COVID time, he would easily run to mass and we'd have to stop him. He's a little bit more selective now, but I still have to watch him because sometimes he consumes or he, con he attempts to consume things that are not good for him. Now I'm gonna pause here because I don't want any of you to go home and say, do you know that the pastor had the nerve to compare us to dogs. <laughs> I don't want you all to miss the lesson, the lesson that I've said over and over this morning. I don't want that to be lost on you. Sometimes we take things in that are not good for us. Sometimes we put things in our heart that are not good for us. Sometimes there is stuff in our recollection that stinks, and we need the move of the Holy Spirit to stop us, to say not good. All I'm saying for you all this week is as you muse on the word, as we send you forth back into the world, a gentle reminder of how important it is to clean your heart. Amen.